Baldur's Gate 3 seems to have some very reasonable system requirements, and I wasn't originally going to investigate this game because it didn't seem that hard to run, but I think it might be interesting to look at on older hardware and maybe give some optimized settings if we can figure out which graphic settings do you tweak for the biggest bang for the buck. Now, uh, also, uh, I mean, this game has just been smashing Steam records and all that, so I do think a lot of people might be uh, busting out their old gaming PC. Is it going to run? So uh, anyway, I'm going to take a look at uh, the closest thing I have to their system requirements here. Uh, they have a GTX 970 as the recommended graphics card, and they are claiming 4 gigabytes plus of VRAM for the minimum requirement. Now, I don't have a 970, but I'm, what I'm showing you here is the tech power up relative performance chart. And if you click on the 970 as the baseline here, I do have a 1066 gigabyte, which is similar, but a little bit faster. Also has a little bit more VRAM, but we can actually investigate the VRAM usage. Make sure you'll be okay on that. Uh, and then we can also try out some other GPUs if we feel like uh, it's gonna be useful once we see how the 1060 is performing. Uh, and then when it comes to CPUs, I don't have anything as old as the i5-4690 or FX-8350. However, I do have a 16 gigabyte uh, system with an i5-9600K, which is fairly similar to the 8700K that they recommend. Although the 8700K is a six core 12 thread CPU from a one generation behind the 9600K. The 9600K is six cores, one generation newer, but only has six threads. Um, and if you look at the boost clocks, the 8700K does go a bit, uh, a bit beyond that. So basically I'm gonna be looking at a system that is uh, slightly above the minimum GPU, but below the recommended GPU and slightly, uh, I guess probably slightly below the recommended CPU. Let's hop in on that system first and see if we can dial in some good settings and then see if it makes sense to take a look at some other GPUs. The game actually defaults to ultra settings on the GTX 1060, but that gets us around 38 frames per second. And to be honest, you know, this not a super fast paced you know, shooter game or anything like that. You might be completely fine with these settings. However, I've noticed that there's a lot you can do here. Uh, again, we're at 1080p on the 1066 gigabyte here. And uh, again, defaulted to ultra settings. But what could we tweak here? Well, first thing I wanna point out is that if you just go all the way down to low settings, you will go over 60 frames per second but I don't think it's optimal. You'll see here that we're now around, you know, 66 frames per second, but you can see like the, the shadows look very flickery. Uh, we, we lack a lot of uh, anti-aliasing. I, I just don't feel like this is the optimal way to boost settings. So I have been doing a lot of isolating of individual settings and their impact uh, to see where we're at. Cause again, low doesn't look that great. If you go to medium, you know, you're around 50, 52 frames per second, things don't look too bad. So honestly, the medium preset is by no means terrible and you could just go with that. Uh, but I think you can actually leave a lot more stuff up uh, than, um, than just doing the medium preset overall. So we're gonna go back to the ultra preset. And then first thing I'm gonna do is drop model quality, but I want you guys to get the baseline so we can see the impact each setting has here. So we're at 38 frames per second. So let's see, uh, as we change a few settings, how much uh, we can boost things. So going from model quality high to model quality low, which you can see on the tooltip over here, adjust the amount of triangles available for the geometry that things are built out of, we gain a few frames per second. We went from about 38 up to about 41, 42. So we're gaining a bit, but in and of itself, that's not gonna be quite uh, enough to get to the frame rate that I'd, I'd be looking for here. So another one that I've found is, uh, can have a very large impact, probably even larger, is shadow quality. And if we drop shadow quality down to low, the shadows still look reasonably good. And you'll notice that we're now up to 52 frames per second, almost 53. So in other words, we're getting about the same frame rate we were on the, uh, by dropping everything down to medium, uh, by actually just changing the model quality to low and the shadows to low. And now everything's still uh, boosted quite significantly overall uh, performance wise. Now the downside is that all of the other ones I feel like are, are less impactful. Now in certain scenes, uh, the fog can be fairly impactful. I'm not sure if I'm in a scene um, right now where it is, but you could drop fog quality down to low 
And depending on your scene, this can make a bit of a difference as well. Looks like we're up to around 55, 56 now. Uh, so again, with fog quality low, shadows to low, and model quality to low, I think we actually look better than the medium preset uh, and a lot better than the low preset. And we're actually fairly close to 60 frames per second as we're running around now, uh, which I think is pretty interesting. But if you wanna get that last little bit, you can turn a bunch of stuff down. Or if you're just on a much weaker GPU, cause again, you might not have the 1060. Uh, another extremely impactful setting is resolution scaling. Now, unfortunately, this game only has FSR 1.0 at this point in time. It does also have DLSS, but if you're on an older GPU, um, uh, you, you don't have, uh, you know, a GTX GPU, not RTX, you won't have option to DLSS. However, if you uh, go to the ultra quality setting, this is gonna render the game below 1080p and then upscale and sharpen uh, to try to make it look close to a native 1080p. Now, in my opinion, it still doesn't, but you'll notice that we get a very large boost in performance here. But you'll notice the details on the characters are a bit low. But one, another thing I really like on this though, is now do you guys see that, watch the frame rate. As we're in this top down view, we're at over 70 frames per second here. Uh, but you can also go into a close-up view, and I think a lot of people playing on a controller might actually use this type of view uh, uh, more frequently. And we're actually able to still manage around 60 frames per second uh, using the ultra-quality FSR 1.0. However, when you look at characters' faces, things like that, um, I, I do want to switch it off again so, so you can tell uh, that there is a bit of loss uh, to detail on this. All right, let's go to video settings. That's where it was. Um, if we switch this off, uh, you'll notice again, now we're below 60 frames per second in this type of scene, but I do think there is more noticeable detail uh, on the characters and small details. But again, if you're on a GPU or you need a bigger boost to performance, uh, beyond the settings that I already showed you, I really do think that uh, FSR is gonna be where you're gonna get those, those last big boosts. And um, you can go beyond the ultra quality setting. Although personally, if you're at a resolution like 1080p, I start to feel like beyond that setting, it really gets to a very questionable image quality. Like you can go all the way down to the quality setting. You can see now our frame rate's up around like 85 in this cut scene. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're over uh, 60 when we're uh, in, in this more demanding kind of viewpoint. Uh, top down, we're, we're up in the 70s. Uh, but again, I really think that you're starting to get to pretty low base resolution here. Um, you, you can go all the way, like if you really need performance though, if you do switch to performance mode, if you're on a very a, a much older system, uh, you can see that there's a lot of performance to be had here uh, going down to that setting. Here, here you can see I'm up, up to 90 frames per second or so here. Uh, but things are looking quite blurry. You can see the face is mostly blurred out here. Um, so not my preferred setting, but if you're on an older GPU, uh, that's certainly a place that you can get, um, quite a bit of performance back. And again, uh, if we switch that off, you can see there's a lot more, uh, detail available on the character faces, things like that. But here we're, we are down around, um, uh, 50 frames per second in that scene. But again, from a, a top down perspective, uh, my original optimization settings do get us fairly close to 60 frames per second. And if you're the kind of person going for a, like a locked 60 frames per second, uh, you, like I said, you, you could go for the FSR ultra quality. And then now if I did want to go to, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say we were on a 60 Hertz display. Uh, this will probably blank out the video for just a second. Sorry guys. So 60 Hertz, uh, display, uh, we could V sync on, and I think we're going to be able to get a nice 60 FPS locked experience. Uh, which would get us a really nice, uh, smooth frame time graph and all that. And apparently uh, we're getting into a conversation scene and, and all of that. I'm gonna try out some other GPUs just to see where we're at. All right, now I've swapped in the RX 6600 from AMD. One reason I chose this is that it is very close to the recommended GPUs, which I don't actually own, the 5700 XT and the 2060 Super. It's an eight gigabyte GPU. We're showing 1080p right now. And again, at the ultra settings, and the good news is this time, well, 
and this top-down sort of view, it looks like we are around 80 frames per second. Uh, when I go into this closer viewpoint, um, it looks like we are over 60 frames per second. And so overall, I think it looks like really you can pretty much just do the ultra settings on this card. And um, the good news also is this GPU brand new is as low as $180 recently. I think 200 is what I saw today. So uh, if you are wanting to upgrade to a GPU that can handle this 1080p maxed out, I think this one's showing a very uh, good promise. Now, uh, of course, you could still do some of those tweaks, especially remember shadow quality was very impactful. If we went down uh, to low settings on that, we're actually now close to 100 frames per second. Uh, we are getting a little stutter in the frame time graph. I am noticing the CPU usage is, is fairly high here, so that could be related. Uh, but again, you could set a frame rate limit, uh, that kind of thing, to try to uh, even that out wherever you're, uh, you're, you're pretty stable. Um, but yeah, overall, it looks like uh, the RX 6600 just uh, does a great job at ultra settings 1080p. Uh, even as we look at more difficult scenes, I'm going to go back to the ultra setting. Uh, but what if you were wanting to play at 1440p on this GPU? Things might get a bit more difficult, so why don't we test that out? We're going to bump up to 2560 by 1440. Uh, sorry, the video will probably disappear for just a second there. So 1440p ultra settings, top down view, we're actually in the mid 50s. It's not bad at all. And you could totally play the game like this. Uh, zooming into closer cameras, looks like we're kind of down in the mid 40s. Uh, but the good news is here, I think that again, just a few minor tweaks should probably get us where we need to be. Like I showed already, shadow quality is one of the real big ones. Uh, if I put that down to low, our top-down view now with uh, a good good bit of stuff on the screen is very close to around 60 frames per second here. And if I did want to also lower um, fog quality and model quality to low, as I already showed earlier, were some uh, more impactful settings, um, we're now over 70 frames per second in this kind of top-down view sort of scene. And we can zoom in the camera a bit here, and we are right around 60. Uh, so overall, we're getting a good, um, a good performance here on the RX 6600, uh, which is good news to see, even at 1440p. Uh, which means I think the last thing we'll look at is let's just try to max this thing out on an RTX 4090, because I mean. Honestly, already we've shown that the game's not super demanding, even on modest hardware. So what does the most powerful hardware look like? All right, now I put in the RTX 4090 and my 7800X 3D based system here. So basically the fastest kind of gaming PC you can build right now. I'm looking at 4K resolution, uh, ultra preset, all of that. And the good news is it looks like we're at like 140 something frames per second in the top down view. If we go in close for this type of view, we can drop below 120 frames per second. Um, but, you know, it's still a very good experience. Uh, now, if you did want to make sure you were still over 120 frames per second, well, what could we do? Um, well, if we actually were going back over it again. Apparently, it's just too easy of a game. But I, I was going to mention that if you are on an RTX GPU, uh, you do get access to DLSS in this game. Uh, which uh, would be a good way to boost performance. Jump down to DLSS quality, and you can get a performance boost here. You can see now I'm up over 160 frames per second uh, uh, on on that kind of a scene, and here we're uh, you know going up over 200 or around 200 or so. Um, now another thing is if you have too much horsepower on the GPU, um, again it, the, this game actually also has DLAA. So if you're not using DLSS to upscale, you could set the um, the anti-alias setting, setting to DLAA, which can look better than TAA sometimes, a little bit less blurry. Um, but it does have a bit of a performance hit. But if you have a lot of extra performance to work with, uh, then you're probably good to go on this. And yeah, so overall, this game seems to run well, even on old hardware. And then if you do have a high-end PC, 
uh, you can scale things up to 4K resolution and all that. Don't think I have too much else to say about it. Uh, so hopefully you guys found this video useful if you needed to tweak a few settings or interesting if you're just curious how uh, how things were running on various pieces of hardware. I would usually check uh, check out more mid-range stuff, but we saw all, it was already doing really well on an RX 6600. Um, I hope all of you have an excellent day.